Now, I know people have said this way too much, but 2020 really has been a wild year for everyone because of this disgusting thing. And one thing that COVID has definitely had an impact on is Nintendo. They didn't reveal too much this year, but it definitely did have its high moments. And those are the moments I want to talk about today. So I'm going to do a review of Nintendo's 2020. So let's get this show on the road. Now, before I get started, let me say that, spoiler alert, this year wasn't nearly as bad as people said it was. Sure, they did a lot of bad anti-consumer practices, and they didn't have nearly as many games as other years, but overall, it wasn't too bad. Why do I think that? Well, let me just get into it now. Well, the first thing 2020 started with is a Smash reveal. Oh boy, I can't wait for Sakurai to reveal a hype new character. After all, it is the last fighter of the past, so it'll probably be some insane character from some crazy third-party series, right? Right? Yeah, Byleth and Smash could have possibly been the most hated Smash reveal ever. I wasn't excited about it, and I don't really know anyone that was that excited about it. On the plus side, at least Byleth had a pretty good moveset. That's all I can really give him, though. Sorry. You can't talk about video games in 2020 without mentioning Animal Crossing. Because Animal Crossing New Horizons really was a big game this year, and it came at the perfect time. Everyone was trapped inside their houses because <coughs> with nothing to do, so Animal Crossing was a big savior. Everyone was playing this game. I was, my friends were, even big YouTubers got in on the action, including PewDiePie himself. This game was so relaxing, and I myself spent countless hours playing it. It made me feel happiness that no other game had made me feel in a very, very long time. It was great. I even made a video about it. But looking back, it's not that amazing of a video. I have a lot of issues with it, even though it's still marked as my best video apparently for some reason. Anyways, moving on. I also want to mention here that there were a ton of rumors for the Mario 3D remasters. Everyone was talking about it, and it seemed like everyone in the world thought they were going to happen. Then later, we had the reveal for Paper Mario The Origami King. This reveal was big in multiple ways. First of all, it was revealing a new game in a series that a lot of people loved, even if the newer games are kind of not good. And second, this is probably the first time Nintendo has ever really just dropped a game that's this big on Twitter. They could have put this game reveal in a direct, but they didn't for some reason. I don't know, it's just kind of strange. They also had this mini direct at one point, but it was pretty disappointing. We only really got Clubhouse games announced there, and the announcement that an ARMS character would be coming to Smash. Then a few months later, we got revealed that the new fighter was Min Min. Basically, everyone said, oh okay, Min Min is in Smash now, and then just moved on with their life. Oh yeah, also throughout the year, we got glimpses of Super Nintendo World, which is a theme park that's being made at Universal Studios based around Mario, so that's pretty cool. We got Pikmin 3 Deluxe this year too, which is good for those who didn't play it on Wii U. And that's a lot of people, because not many people own Wii U's. Then Nintendo kind of went quiet for a while. Nothing big really happened, when all of a sudden, they dropped it. A huge Mario Direct packed with announcements. First of all, they had Mario 3D World coming to the Switch, which is nice. And then they had Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, and a few other things sprinkled in here and there as well. But... The real star of the show is Mario 3D All-Stars. 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy were all getting ported to the Switch in this collection. Oh boy, I'm sure that everyone is going to love these ports and that everyone will think that this game has a ton of effort put into it and that Nintendo totally didn't do just the bare minimum, right? Right? Yeah, so many people didn't like 3D All-Stars because, well... Honestly, they really did just do the bare minimum with this game, in my opinion. But, it is nice that we can play three, I mean, two great Mario games on the Switch now. After all that happened, Nintendo also announced that Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity was gonna come out. It was cool that this was a prequel to Breath of the Wild, and that it had the same art style as the game too. Not much more to comment here. 
Oh yeah, I didn't know where else in this video to mention this, but there were also a lot of Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcases this year. Everyone seriously hated these things since they had no Nintendo reveals in them at all. If they would have just not had the word Direct in the title and just called it a Nintendo Partner Showcase, I don't think really anyone would be mad at it because they're not thinking of it like a Nintendo Direct and so they wouldn't expect any big reveals. At least they did clarify that this isn't really a real Direct. But that can't stop Nintendo fans from still being stupid. Then, it happened. He came. Steve in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Now, Steve in Smash might have been the most universally loved Smash reveal ever. I like Minecraft. Do you like Minecraft? Everyone likes Minecraft. I don't know anyone who didn't like this Steve in Smash reveal. Seriously, everyone loved it. People truly thought that Sakurai could not top this character in a million years. But... Then something sad happened relating to Smash. The Big House, which is a Super Smash Bros. Melee tournament, got cancelled. It has something to do with Nintendo not wanting to emulate their own games or something, and that's why it got cancelled. This is really stupid and makes no sense. Why do they care about protecting a game that they don't even sell? Seriously, Nintendo, what are you thinking? This even continued into a Splatoon tournament. People were naming themselves Free Melee in the tournament for everyone to see, and I guess Nintendo just couldn't handle this all. So they shut down the Splatoon tournament as well. I seriously wish Nintendo would stop doing these mean things, and I think that everyone can agree with me on that. At the start of the Game Awards, Sephiroth was also revealed. Now, usually with Smash reveals, everyone can usually agree if the reveal was good or bad. Byleth, bad. Steve, good. But Sephiroth? Eh, it depends on who you ask. For me personally, I wasn't really that excited for the reveal. I've never really played any Final Fantasy games before, so I don't have any connection to this character. But I can't see that a ton of other people were happy with this reveal, so I can't really call it bad, honestly. And as the last thing of 2020, Nintendo also had a big direct that wasn't themed around games, but around Super Nintendo World. That place absolutely looks like a dream come true. There are so many things to do and see at that place, and I hope I can go there in the future when it comes to America. Anyways, yeah, that was my review of Nintendo's 2020. Now, let me return to what I said at the beginning of this video. I didn't really think this year was all that bad. Yes, it had its low moments, but come on, we had Animal Crossing, we got 3D All-Stars, we got Pikmin 3 Deluxe, and Age of Calamity, and Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, and four whole Smash reveals, one of which being Minecraft, Steve, and a whole bunch of other good things too. We get all of these things, and yet we call it a bad year? I don't really get where you're coming from when you say it's bad, but okay, you, you do you, I guess. Anyways, what did you think of this year? Were you happy like me, or were you a bit disappointed? Tell me down below, later.